folks, welcome back. For I'm the one, the only, I am Hobo Tom. And I need to thank a whole bunch of people, but only that. Yes, I'm here to talk about some SmackDown wrestling tonight. But first, I have to get to this list. Sear. Again, so many people watched my channel over the weekend. They left so many comments. Um, people on... There was not only my YouTube page, but on Discord and at the Friendoverse. So, at least, it's, again, I'd like to thank everyone. I apologize. This is going to be a long video. A good half hour of thank yous are going out. But that's okay. That's okay by me. Then I have some other stuff to get to. And then I'll get... Then I promise I will get to a review of of raw but again because all these people they made the hobo list they with well bum sucks gets honorable mention he's already a member of the daytona beach bum fight league but that's okay though let's hear blake lewis you sir have earned that six count Carlos Valle, you, sir, are a master of the air guitar.
Welsh Wrestling Nerd, also known as Bump Slicks. Hello. You, you don't get any more. Because you, sir, already are already featured in the Daytona Beach Bump Fight League. I might have to make that new character, too. I have to think. I have to think about that. And I have to get, and I, I do have to get ready for that, for the Havoc of Halloween. That's a whole other issue, though. Isaiah Lewis, thank you so much. Yes, you made the show always very enjoyable. With that, sir, you are that luchador on a forklift. Mark Rafferty, you're carrying around your briefcase boombox. Earl Hebner? Wow, someone famous is watching me? You, sir, however, can crawl out of here. <laughs> Tra la la. I might have to make you. Because you're out of here. Nicholas Grosskirth, you sir win by dirty pin. And Brent Mitchell. Holy shit! Wow, the editing of this is going to be rough. Yeah, I'd like to thank all of those, and if you too, yes, you out there in the YouTube universe, would like your little shout out video, you know, you, have, you can do it a couple of ways. You can find me over there on WooTube. I generally post very bad stuff, so yeah, you can say whatever to it. You can, so that's one way. 
If you're part of the Friendoverse, shout out when I post up videos. The most part of this video will be going up Tuesday, Tuesday morning-ish. Um, leave a comment. Comments are always welcome. Subscribe! Yeah, subscribers are the best. And if you email... I don't know. See, I wonder if I have any more emails. If you email me, sometimes I, I might check my email. I rarely do. Generally, the email that says bad things like my videos have been blocked and I should feel shame and sit in the corner for a few minutes. They made a copyright for what? No. Oh, wait, that was my predictions. What, what was that for? Extended Mucho Mix. Oh, wow. Yeah, generally it's Phil's copyright claim. Yeah, I kind of knew about this one. Anthem. Yeah, I can't show certain stuff. I'm slowly learning what Impact is allowing me to do and don't do, but that's okay, that's okay though. I'm learning. Again, this is not an Impact show. Again, Macho Man Savage is definitely someone from the WWE. And let's talk about this weekend very quickly. I was in shock. Iho Del Hobo El Vagabundo has never gone perfect for any weekend. And granted, Impact put on two more matches, but they didn't really list them, so I'm not going to count those against him. But the matches that they did put up, and granted, I think I, I looked it up literally Thursday night, made the video f Friday. So yeah, but as you can tell, for Impact Victory Road, he was 6 for 6. Means if Vince, Mc, which means if someone in the McMahon family was running Impact, it would be Vincent Kennedy McMahon. Then for NXT, again, look at that: Damien Priest defeated Johnny Gargano, Io Shirai beat Candice LeRae, Finn Balor defeated Kyle O'Reilly. She did defeat Velveteen Dream. I was that was kind of like the one I was up in the air about. That could have gone either way. And Santos Escobar defeated. Oh, that's why. Defeated um, Isaiah Swerve Scott for the cruiserweight belt. Some good stuff over the weekend. Again, this was an amazing weekend full of wrestling. I'm so happy there's no wrestling this weekend. Look at this, like some blood sport thing, like. I'm not even watching that. That's that's a little bit beneath me. And I think it's on like late at night. And you know, sometimes you just have to try and quilo. So again, also, not only was was Iho del Vagabundo Dos in the head of Vincent Kennedy McMahon. For impact, but he was also inside the inner workings of one Vincent Kennedy McMahon's head for NXT. I've I've never seen him go perfect for two shows. I've never seen him go perfect for one show in the two years I've been doing this. That's that's impressive. I have to clap for. Iho del Hobo El Vagabundo Trace. So, yep. So, with all that being said, I know that probably took, probably took a good half hour. I do apologize for that, but I do like to get those thank yous out. You guys deserve it. Um, so, now let's talk about some Monday Night Raw. And I'm going to try and make this as quick as possible because I still have a lot to do tonight. And even though my camera is. It's botching up and down, so yeah, it's going to be funky like a monkey, baby. Um, so we have... Oh, I also... Shoot, I forgot this one. Um, one more to add to the list. Paul Hernandez. You, sir, are experiencing some mundo madness.
There we go. I actually wrote that down separately because I think that was, I think that was, I think he said something. I don't know. Why I already gave him a shout out on SmackDown. What am I doing? Wait, where are my notes? Where are my real notes at? Oh yeah. You know what? I don't need to do that. I'll figure that out somehow. Where did I put it all? What's that? Oh, I just started on a whole other page without. Oh, that's why I put open bump. Yeah. I have no clue what I'm doing right now. I am exhausted. I actually had a very productive work day though. So this 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 notes, this is good, but yeah, it goes away. So it's Monday Night Raw. Let's talk about some Monday Night Raw. Randy Orton starts off because a promo. Um Drew McIntyre jumps him. We kinda know where this is gonna lead. This is gonna lead to a hell hell in a cell match. Or probably the Thunderdome, baby. Put the hell in a cell in the thunder. Wow. I think that had a match like that. Like a steel cage inside of a cage. I'll have to find that. That that would be pretty cool. Uh, so <laughs> the opening match sucked. It was Lana and Natalia and Selena Vega taking on Dana Brooke, Mandy Rose, and Asuka. One of these things is not like... Well, actually, two of these things... Are not like the other six. Zelina Vega not doesn't have blonde hair, and Oscar has multicolored hair. Everyone else is bimbo blonde color, with big tits. Yeah, large-breasted blonde-haired women. The way Vince McMahon likes them. Uh, it starts off. Natalia tried to try to do a roll up. Right off the bat, uh, eventually on Dana Brooke, eventually uh, Natalia gets. <laughs> Dana Brooke went for his um, satellite head scissors. You could tell by the position of her calves, like her calves were like literally on the outside part of Natalia's shoulders, and you could see Natalia physically holding on, as if to hold on to Dana and Dana started off like as nothing like she, she had to start to like Natalia had to do all the work for this and I feel bad for Natalia because pound for pound it, it's it's hard to swing someone your weight around like that especially if they're just being a big lump or having dose lumps yeah but um like Dana Brooke has. I'll say that. So this move looked kind of rough. Again, it's one thing if, if the legs are tight to the neck. You can say, well, at least she's holding on because her neck hurts. But when the feet are like visibly out here, eh, I thought she was going to swing Dana Brooke around, but Dana Brooke does the satellite leg scissors. <sighs> Not the best... I might even downgrade this match too now that I think about it. Although there were some good moments. That was, that was meh. Again, that was just kind of weird. Um, Dana Brooke then tags in, I think this time, Mandy Rose. They do a, a, double, ver a double vertical suplex. And then, like, Selena Vega had. I am going to downgrade it, actually. I'm sorry, Asuka. But that was like the weakest pull off by Selena Vega. Like, Selena Vega went to the ring apron to try to pull off Asuka. Like, she could barely yank her foot off the ring. And by the time Asuka probably felt it and realized that she's like, oh, I better like drop to a knee. And then she very gingerly and very protectedly just kind of fell on both feet on the ring apron. And. She had this like look of being more annoyed. Because normally when the wrestlers fall off the ring apron, they they, they their, their head goes to the mat, they they slap the mat with their hands, and, and they kind of they go whap. And and it looks like they they get whiplash. At least they sell it. Asuka was like, the hell is this? Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah, so that was again pretty weak. Again, Zelina Vega was still staring at like the jaw. Of Asuka. Again, Zelina Vega is amazingly short. I think. 
Natalia's actually the tallest one of the bunch. She's like that normal. I don't know what she's built at, but I want to say she's that like more average woman height, five seven ish. I mean, she's not super tall. She's not super short. She's that weird like five seven, five six, five eight range between five six and five eight. An average woman. Zena Vega's like four foot ten, like I don't know, four foot ten inches. Oscar, I know, is more in the five three range. Dana Brooke, her chest takes up most of her her body. Again, that that five five. Mandy Rose, yeah, pretty close to that five six five seven. Uh, Lana, again, I think is around five six. Again, you out there in the YouTube universe can always correct me, but Zelina Vega just looks like a, a like a high school girl among women in this match. Um, uh, Mandy gets worked over a little bit in the corner by Zelina Vega, and Zelina Vega little, literally needed to to bounce off the bottom rope to land like a head kick. I could land a head kick standing; it wouldn't be the prettiest thing, but I could do it. If it was like some again, if it's some of my height, I could probably do it. Guy six five, maybe, or maybe to get a little extra stank on it, I would do it. But I make it obvious, like like she tried to really downplay the rope bounce. It was there though. Again, Zelina Vega looks like a high school girl among women. It, it looks not good. Uh, Lana eventually gets I guess the cover on Mandy Rose. And and Lana does so so it looks so improved one week, and then she's like the one wrestler that digresses like the next time because like she was just like trying to literally kick Mandy Rose's butt, and you can tell like if you're gonna kick someone in the ass, you're not gonna really hurt them. You might as well just go full swing, like her knee was bent and just like eh eh. Now, Lana has to learn how to... Uh, she has to learn something. Um, Lana eventually eats a pump knee by Mandy Rose. Lana eats the pin. The burial and the humiliation of the Rusa family continues. Because then, the only redeeming factor is that Nia Jackson and Shannon Baser came out. Um, Natty ate a pretty nasty smell in the head, but... And Lana goes through the table. The burial of Lana continues. Then there's a little hurt. So I'll tell you what. Overall, uh, I really buried that match. It was a soup match. Then we have Nia J again. Yeah, Nia Jax and Shayna Baszler coming out and like destroying Lana was the best part of it. If, if that was a crowd, they'd be chanting. Shayna's gonna kill you. They, they do need that live audience, and I think a live audience is coming back eventually. I just do not know to what capacity, though. Because they did have some live people there at the NXT show, behind the plexiglass at the Amway Center. They had the arena set up a little bit differently. If it wasn't the Amway Center, it might have been the doc. I don't think it was a Dr. Phillips. I'm not too sure about that. I don't think it was. The only other one I could think of was UCF. Might have been UCF. I think. Unless the Magic have a practice facility. Because it didn't seem like the Amway Center. It didn't look like full sale. It doesn't make sense to transport all that for one show. I don't know. What it is, what it was. Then we have Drew Gulak rolled rolled up our truth as our truth, like speaking to little Jimmy. Uh, wh whatever. All this twenty four seven backstage stuff is toast. Then we have um the hurt business recap that was pretty cool. Then Seth and Murphy comes out. Seth, Seth, Murphy says Seth apologized to Aaliyah. And Murph and Seth is like, I'm not apologizing to anyone. You apologize for me for your piss poor actions. That's what I have to say. 
and let's see I'm gonna take it from right here because my camera just went through. And actually, you know that this is a lot better. Yeah, it's probably just too much space on. I have to start erasing some videos. That's a whole other issue. Oh, I can do that Thursday, though. Indeed. Um, yeah, eventually I do need a new computer, but that's that's a whole separate issue. One day. With money. But yeah, um, so Seth says, no, you need to apologize to me. You have by 10 o'clock to apologize to me. And Riff's like, no, you need to apologize to me for your treatment of Leah. Yeah, whatever. Because next match we have Seth Rollins and Murphy taking on Umberto Carrillo and Dominic Mysterio. This is getting a little old. Um, I like the way it went towards the end. This match... It's a, it still felt a little fresh. It felt like kind of what they did last week, but a little bit more. I'll tell you what. Dominic Mysterio, man, you have the most amazing tutelage ever. You have Umberto Carrero, uh, Angel Garza. I know. It's not Mil, Mil Mascaras. There's another luchador who in Mexico is really, really famous. Heck, I don't think it's Hector Garza. I forget, but he's a master wrestler. He's famous. He's the father of Angel Garza and the uncle of Umberto. And then, so you take those, you take those three. Don't worry, I'm not doing siren math. And then you add in Rey Mysterio plus, I'm sure, Chavo and Hector Guerrero. And probably, and to, to some degree, Chavo Sr. I'm sure between, so that's three, four. So yeah, so between those seven, that's a hell of a tutelage. So I'll tell you what. Every so, the thing I like about this is that you can see Dominic learning. He's adding more moves to his repertoire. Um, right off the back, because of what's been happening, the faces jump to heels. Dominic hit a tilt a whirl side Russian leg sweep. I have never seen that before. And the fact that Dominic Mysterio hit that move, bravo, sir. That was amazing. And he's learning so much. Um, then they, they did their double X splash, which was pretty cool. Uh, I think um, I, um, Mysterio, I don't think, I, he hasn't mastered the, like, the flying dive yet. That's fine. He has plenty of time to learn. His, even if he is 20-something, his muscles can still grow and develop. So he still has plenty of time to be able to, to jump over ropes with the greatest of ease. Even to the top rope. Dove in one direction, Umberto Carrillo went to, dove over the ropes running the other direction for him in X. That's, that's always amazing looking. Uh, back in the ring, Seth again works over Dominic Mysterio. Now it's Murphy's turn. Uh, Seth, after a while, Seth gets back. And he's like, no, I'm going to take care of this. Uh, you don't tag me in, I'll tag you in. That kind of heel line. Uh, Seth is a floating ring. Ribs to poor Dominic. That just looks like it hurts. The sling blade. Uh, Dominic makes a hot tag to to Umberto. Umberto he just flies. He does the lucha stuff. Um, however, Umberto eats a big knee. A vicious Murphy has amazing knees. Uh, he eats a vicious knee because he went flying, and Murphy caught him like in midair. Again, it the visual aspect of it looked utterly amazing. Seth and Murphy win, but I'll tell you what, Dominic Mysterio's freaking amazing. That was a surf. That was a surf and turf match. And then it got into promo city. Um, it was Braun and Adam Pearce are talking about? 
I want a match or I'm going to destroy stuff. Braun shouldn't say he's going to destroy stuff. He should just, like, tear down the set and say, give me my match. And then we see Keith Lee saunter on in. Uh, Seth and Murphy, they kind of, like, yell at each other for a while about who's going to apologize to who. Uh, the Kevin Owens show was Bray Wyatt, and he did a little sing-song. The Kevin Owens about friendship, even though Ramblin' Rabbit got killed for, I think, the 10th time, and he was eaten by Mercy the Buzzard. That's always good to see. Then at the end, Alistair Black comes out of nowhere, Black Mass, Kevin Owens. Kevin Owens is like, why me? And then we have Drew McIntyre doing a promo that was good. Uh, we come back from that. Uh, Braun Strowman taking on Keith Lee. Starts out they with a tie-up. Neither, neither big man, they tie up. But neither man, they're not. They're so equally powerful. They can't get that early advantage. Uh, then it was like, uh, Keith Lee got sent off the ropes. Tried to shoulder tackle Braun Strowman. Braun Strowman was like, eh. Um, they do a couple, again, big man spots. Braun Strowman tried to drop kick. That was kind of interesting. Hit Keith Lee right in the gut with that. That was actually pretty cool. Granted, my drop kick wouldn't be much much higher. Then they go to the outside and they just do clubbing blows, clubbing big man blows in an exhibition match. And yes, you can lose an exhibition match via count out. I'll tell you what, it was pretty good though. If they set this up the right way for the future. This could be a great showing for both Braun and Keith Lee. I mean, they could be the next Twin Towers if they really did it right, because heaven knows they're not doing anything with those tag belts anyway. So, yeah, you know what? For the most part, even though it ended with a count out, it was a ham sandwich of a match. And then it continues on to the outside. They just be continue to club each other. And Braun spears Keith Lee through the barricade. Almost into the TV sets. That's pretty cool. It would have been funnier if he like, would have went through one of the screens and broke it by pure accident. Oh, that would be funny, though. Someone, someone in the Thunderdome dies. That would be pretty cool. And then that is Thunderdome, baby! Um, then we have a 24-7 fight. Literally in like, a big garbage... Big garbage container, big garbage bin. Where my daddy was a dustman. He wears his dustman pants. We'll tribute there to King Ross Twiddell. Um, over there on Cultaholic. My daddy, he's a dustman. He wears his dustman pants. I forget the way the rest of the song goes, but that's okay. And somehow the ref saw that our that truth won. It was entertaining. It just seemed, it seemed like a Scooby Doo fight scene. <laughs> and the reason I say that, if you think about Scooby Doo fight scenes, there's always that kind of big cloud of dust, and then every so often, like a competitor would show up, like a garbage bag would be tossed in the air, then like um. So I think they, I think they all get tossed into the dustbin because I was hiding in a garbage can. Our truth is in the dustbin. The referee is there. Drew Gulak jumps into the dustbin. Um, gee, dustbin, I'm sounding very English now. But the big garbage container, the, the garbage dumpster, Tzell follows him. You hear the rumblings, the thing shakes, a garbage bag goes flying up. Drew Gulak pops his head up, kind of looks up, kind of dives back in. Uh, again, another garbage bag flies in the opposite direction. Tzell kind, kind of pops his head up, looks down, goes back in. And then the next thing you know, the ref's counting three, and then R-Truth comes out with, with his title. This was entertaining mainly for its Acme-ish Looney Tunes quality fight scene. Only because I was entertained and I laughed, and it brought me back to the good old days of, of cartoon fights. This is a ham sandwich. I do want to see what someone... Someone else has to mention this looks like a cartoon, like a Scooby-Doo or, or, or a Bugs Bunny fight scene, though. Then we have the Hurt Business taking on Ricochet and Apollo Crews is the next match. 
uh, Shelton Benjamin and the, her business. We have Shelton Benjamin and Bobby Lashley. Uh, Shelton again. He's he's amazing. Um, Ricochet went for a sunset flip. That wasn't happening. Put on a nasty looking armbar. Shelton Benjamin probably learned the most from his time in New Japan. In Impact and Ring of Honor, he was a really good wrestler, very technical wrestler, and very coming from that collegiate style. When he went to New Japan, he learned a little bit more so of the submission style of wrestling moves. So I just had to adjust the chair a little bit. So with that, he really worked in that submission catch wrestling game, which is really good. It really elevated his level because, again, that arm bar, it looked, like, legit. That was good to see. Uh, Ricochet, eventually, he gets beat up some more. Apollo Crews gets a hot tag. He works over Shelton Benjamin in the corner. He has an okay spine. Uh, Apollo Crews is an okay spine buster and, and then a standing moonsault. Um... Bobby Lashley comes in to breaks up the pin. Ricochet comes in. Ricochet eats a dominator. He just got like flipped around on, on the shoulder of Bobby Lashley a few times. Then he eats a dominator. That's the end of that. Sheldon Benjamin again has that big German suplex very collegiately. Um, there's no spear, but uh, Bobby Lashley tags in. He's, MVP's like, finish this. We're done here. Fun's over, boys. And then he, so MVP gave the gave the a, uh, a bring on home call. Um, he didn't hit a spear, but he hit a big choke slam, then the hurt lock, and that was the end of that. Hurt business win, a really good match. I mean, this was a good quality cheeseburger match. And then we get to the ten o'clock hour. So yeah, like all. I kind of abbreviate those little talking segments because the Kevin Owens show went on probably a little too long. And Braun confronting Adam Pierce was too long. And then the besides the there was a Looney Tune fight, which always takes a while. Then we have uh, Seth and Murphy again. They're in the ring. Uh, Murphy takes down Seth when he's told when Seth says, Apologize to me now. Murphy says, No, he takes down Seth. Again, beats him up a little bit. Gets out the kendo stick uh, because that took a while. Murphy was, uh, Seth took off his jacket and said, go ahead, strike me down. Strike me down and I shall only become more powerful. But no, Murphy didn't. That was his, That was a, enough of a distraction. Seth gets said kendo stick, beats on Murphy. Aaliyah arrives uh, to save Murphy. Seth kind of escapes. Then Dominic and the whole Mysterio family, they're like, Aaliyah, get over here. You're not supposed to be hanging around with that dirty scuzzball, that dirty Australian Murphy. Don't you know that most of those Australians are the descendants of, of scuzzballs and, 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 and criminals? We don't want you hanging out with no criminal. That's right, Murphy's a criminal, was a descendant of criminals and scuzzballs. But this, it was an okay segment. It is what it was. Then the... Uh, Shayna Baszler and Nia Jax versus the Riot Squad was next. This was actually really good. I'll tell you what. Maybe it's because Shayna Baszler is close to my age. For some reason, Shayna Baszler looked... I, someone's going to say this sounds terrible. She's looking a little softer. She's not as jacked as she used to be. She's looking, at least to my eyes, a little more feminine. Um, when I met her, again, that was kind of neat to, neat to see. Um, but now, may, maybe WWE has figured out how to apply makeup to women and make them look cute. Normally, it's the opposite. Normally, like, the women that get made up, they look absolutely terribly fake. Shayna Baszler is one of those few women who wear a little makeup here and there. Good job, Shayna. Nia Jax is Nia Jax, and then you have the Riot Squad. Uh, Shannon Baszler kind of works over the arm of Ruby Riot for a while. Nia Jax enters the ring. Um, she she eats a buckle on from Liv, because then Liv gets the tag in. Uh, Liv starts splashing everyone until she's caught, I think, the third or fourth time by Nia Jax with a kick. 
Um, I'm going to try to go up, but no, that wasn't happening. Uh, yeah, Naya just like picked up Live by the Hair again. That Smoan headbutt's still amazing. Um, Nia Jax holds Liv Morgan. Shannon Baszler just throws punches to the gut of Liv Morgan. Then uh, Ruby Ruby tagged in for the hot tag. There was a slingshot DDT that looked absolutely amazing by Liv Morgan. A turtle stomp again is your basic all four women women in the ring. Uh, Ruby Riot went for the right the right kick, but no, that was countered by Shayna. I put in the in the car in the in the rear naked choke. I I forget what she calls it. It's a rear naked choke. I'm tired of trying to figure out what names wrestlers call the same move. Unless it's like something different. No, it's a rear naked choke. Smojo uses a rear naked choke. John Moxley uses a rear naked. Everyone uses the rear naked choke now. It's not as cool as it used to be. But. Uh, Liv taps out. Shayna refuses to let go. Uh, Liv's there, held in the corner, forcing her partner, being forced to watch her partner tap to to the rear naked choke. Eventually, Nia lets go of her. Uh, Liv pulls, and then aw moment. Uh, she pulls Shayna Baszler off of her partner Ruby Riot. So that was pretty cool. That was a good match. Solid cheeseburger match. Did I say Nia Jax had a cheeseburger match? Wow. Indeed. Then we have MVP versus Mustafa Ali. Um, Ali comes. Uh, Ali just for the opening part of the match eats any eats any and everything MVP throws at him. Um, that big knee drop to the head always still looks amazing. Uh, Ali hit a drop kick to MVP, forces him out of the ring. And then, oh yeah, uh, Ali gets surrounded by, by, uh, the Hurt Business. And then Retribution shows up. So I figure out who the members of Retribution are. You have Bane, rock rock, for I am Bane. Bane's one of them. Or wait. Bone is one of them. The Predator is another one. And then you have Casey Jones from the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles joining Re Retribution. Um, Ali and the Hurt Business kind of align themselves quickly. However, Ali goes out. Ali is the leader of Retribution. And I'll tell you what, it just seems so inconsequential. And so anticlimactic. Um, yeah. That match was... That was okay. Again, it was this anticlimactic... It was a ham sandwich. How dare you call one of my run-ins a ham sandwich? You fat hobo! Don't you know? The displeasure of pain will be felt by all in the city of Orlando now. Don't fear. Pain anymore, Batman. But fear what happens to Hobo Tom, Batman. See if you can save his life and the many others that inhabit that vile, disgusting, crime laden area of Daytona Beach, Batman. Let's see if you really care about the inhabitants of Daytona Beach, or do you care more about the inhabitants of Orlando Moore? Indeed, Batman, indeed. We will force you to make your choice. Yes. Bane has spoken. And that's the end. I'll, and that's the, the last I'll do of that. I do like doing my Bane impression, though. Then the next match, it's uh, Drew McIntyre and the Street Profits taking on Randy Orton and Dolph Ziggler and Glorious Bobby Roode. Um, for the most part, 
Uh, Drew McIntyre stands tall. He just swipes away everything. Um, Dolph tries something, pushes him aside. Robert Roode tried something, shoves him aside. He pushed out of the RKO. Drew McIntyre just cleans house. Ford eventually sees that the heels are outside the ring, so he goes over the top rope, does this flippy thing. But outside the ring, there, there, there's nothing to do the Ultimate Warrior thing with. So, yeah, we kind of lost that. I think it was yeah, Monta, yeah, Ford. Um, Drew eventually just freaking tosses Dolph around. It's not even funny. Suplex, like, like drops him all, all over the place. Um, Randy gets nailed in the ribs. It's great. Um, the Scottish headbutt on Rude. Then Ando Darkin, Darkin gets in. He gets nailed by a pop-up DDT by Dolph Ziggler. That was kind of impressive looking. Orton gets in. Slow, methodical, the draping DDT onto Dawkins. Uh, back in the ring. Dawkins does a meh spine buster to Dolph. Uh, Ford does a frog splash. But he gets... Um, Orton gets... Saved by Rude um, Dolph. <laughs> Dolph gets Claymore. Root when he was trying to do a um, zigzag. So he did hit the famous or so. So Dawkins is, is out. But then Drew comes back in. Dolph gets Claymore. Rude gets Claymore. Orn hits the RKO on Drew McIntyre. He gets the pin. Advances the story a little bit. You know what? That's kind of goofy. It was a Dolph Ziggler goofy match, but you know what? It was still a cheeseburger match. And for the most part, that was raw. I'll tell you what. I think besides the opening women's match, all the 24-7 garbage and all the talking stuff, I'll tell you what, raw for the most part was a cheeseburger raw. And that was it for Monday Night Raw. Again, not bad. Could always be better. Always room for improvement. Uh, rest of the week, Tuesday, tomorrow, I do. I go back to live streaming Impact Wrestling. They allow me to show more, so therefore they get more. They get a little bit better coverage. Wednesday's a review of AEW. Um, Thursday, I'm off. That's always good to see. Friday's a SmackDown review. Then I'm off for the weekend. I'm going to Tranquilo. So again, I'd like to thank everyone for watching. So please like, share, comment, and subscribe. Uh, email me. Just don't say I'm, I'm doing bad stuff because that's okay. Or if I am doing bad stuff, tell me how to improve it. And if you say your, your sink sucks, listen, this is a free program. I had a $29 movie maker.